How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing discovery of a completely new type of a planet we've never known existed. Although technically these types of planets very likely exist everywhere, we just had no idea these planets are possible until recent observations. And by itself this discovery should not come as a surprise because in the last few years, especially because of observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers have already confirmed several major new types of planets, some with very exotic properties we actually didn't even think would be possible. And so let's talk about this new discovery and the study behind this and find out what this planet is like. A planet that potentially looks something like this. This is Gliese 1214b, but it also has a proper name, Anipotia, a name it received a couple of years ago, because originally this planet was officially confirmed back in 2009, and even back then it was believed to be super exciting. And so yeah, this is not a new discovery of a planet, this is a discovery of a new type of a planet, because it turns out that this is not exactly what we thought. And in this case, this new discovery basically provides us with a little bit more evidence and a little bit more information about how these extreme planets form and how certain star systems seem to evolve differently from the Sun. But I guess here, first, let's talk about some of the recent discoveries of other planetary types, because in just the last five years or so, there's actually been quite a few studies defining new types of planets, usually based on their mass, their orbit, or their composition. Although in some cases by other classifications, such as for example the location around the galaxy. But essentially, as soon as space telescopes became operational and were able to capture planets and analyze them, we almost instantly started to discover bizarre planets. Planets that nobody believed or nobody could even imagine would exist somewhere out there, because approximately two decades ago, in the early 2000s, it was mostly assumed that most planets are going to be kind of similar to what we have in the solar system. But here, almost right away, science has discovered Super Jupiters, Super Neptunes, Mini Neptunes, and Super Earths. These were actually some of the first discoveries from the Kepler telescope, and they actually seem to represent the majority of planets discovered so far, which was really bizarre. It basically meant that planets in the solar system are actually kind of rare. And so by mid-2010s, it was established that the majority of planets out there seem to be either Super Earths or Mini Neptunes. Basically planets a little bit smaller than Neptune, but much much bigger than planet Earth. Although not exactly like Neptune, and not exactly like Earth at all. And so in total, over half of all planets discovered seem to fall into this category. With additional observations, especially focusing on orbits of these planets, also revealing additional types of planets based on their orbit as well. And while a huge number of planets turn out to be hot Jupiters. Basically Jupiter-like planets extremely close to the parent star. These turn out to be so common that it was basically impossible to avoid them. But apart from hot Jupiters, researchers also discovered hot Neptunes, which potentially serve as some kind of a precursor for super Earths or for similar smaller planets. Likewise, approximately a decade ago, circumbinary planets were confirmed as well. This is basically a planet orbiting two stars at the same time. All of these discovered in just the last decade or so. Lastly, some of the most exciting discoveries when it comes to new types of planets were also based on their composition. For example, extremely recently, researchers finally confirmed Ktonian planets. Planets that basically used to be very likely gas giants or possibly Neptune lakes, but eventually evaporated all of their atmosphere, leaving behind a terrestrial core. These planets were hypothesized for a very long time, but they were officially confirmed not so long ago, and a lot of videos in the description should explain this in more detail. Then, in the last couple of years or so, scientists have also confirmed two very unusual types of super-Earth planets that basically have very strange composition that was somewhat difficult to explain. One of these planet types is known as the Hycean world. Basically, a bizarre super-hot planet with potentially super-critical water on the surface that though contains oceans and potentially very deep oceans, might actually be too hot and too extreme for life to survive. Likewise, just a few months ago, there was also confirmation for what's known as a steam world. A somewhat similar concept, but with a planet that basically has steam atmosphere and very likely oceans that are also kind of extreme. Once again, the videos in the description describe these planets a little bit more. But one of the more mysterious types of planets was known as the Poofy Planet with some of the bigger examples known as super poofs. In a nutshell, in terms of mass, these were very similar to Jupiter and sometimes Saturn, 
but their size would be dramatically larger. They were basically kind of like expanded or poofy Jupiters, which is why they started to be called poofy planets. And their expanded atmosphere basically didn't really make a lot of sense. It was not clear why they had such a low density and why they were inflated to such a large degree, especially because their inflated atmosphere didn't really make much sense. Here's for example one of the first such discoveries, Tras 4b. And I guess what's even more surprising is that none of these unusual planets, many of which have been discovered in other star systems, seem to have ever existed here in a solar system and exactly why was not clear. And so because these planets were so different from anything we have, it was obviously difficult to guess how they were formed or even what they're made out of or what's in their atmosphere. But as I mentioned, one of the most common types of planets is basically either a super Earth or a mini Neptune. And even today it's not entirely clear if this is actually two types of planets or if it's just a much larger category of the same type of a planet that seems to be both larger and more massive than planet Earth but much smaller and much less massive than Neptune. And so for many years now, researchers have basically debated what sort of a composition we're going to find on these planets and what kind of an atmosphere they would have as well. For example, is this basically some kind of an Earth-like planet with a very expanded hydrogen-rich atmosphere and thus high pressure and potentially high temperature? Or would this be something very similar to Neptune, containing a lot of icy components, including water-rich atmosphere, and potentially a lot of haze and a lot of organic compounds, both on the surface and inside the atmosphere. And so obviously there were quite a lot of models and quite a lot of simulations, but no actual evidence yet. And that's because atmospheric spectroscopy, which is required to determine all of this, was still in its infancy. But in the last few years, techniques in atmospheric spectroscopy suddenly became advanced enough to help us see what's inside. And this is basically both because of James Webb Space Telescope but also because of the Very Large Telescope, part of the European Southern Observatory, which has a bunch of instruments that allow us to measure planetary spectroscopy directly from planet Earth. And so, in a couple of new studies, Kazumasa Ono and Everett Schlawen, along with their teams, conducted a relatively detailed observation of the planet known as Gliese 1214b in order to determine what this particular super-Earth contained on its surface and if it was basically some kind of a water world hazy, Neptune-like world, or some kind of a very large terrestrial planet. And here, once again, all of this was done in a very simple way. By observing the light from the star as it passes through the atmosphere of the planet, which we can kind of simulate right here using Space Engine, it becomes possible to actually see spectroscopy of various elements in the atmospheric layer, allowing researchers to determine what the atmosphere contains and what it's like on the inside. And so here, by using James Webb Space Telescope, they focused on one of the easiest planets to observe that's approximately 48 light years away from the Sun. And previously, this planet was potentially believed to be some kind of an ocean world, or basically some kind of a water world, with possibly very thick, very large clouds, that was actually officially discovered back in 2013 during some of the first observations. But here, it was not entirely clear what kind of clouds these would be, and more importantly, if this planet could actually contain water after all, and basically be some kind of a really massive water world with maybe once again supercritical water. And so because this object is relatively close to the sun and because it transits in front of the star, here this was a perfect target for the James Webb. And one of the first discoveries in terms of spectroscopy was actually carbon dioxide, with potentially also signs of methane. So basically by observing this in 2.8 to 5.1 micron, researchers discovered definitive signs of CO2, methane, and basically atmosphere that's high metallicity compared to some assumptions that maybe it was actually hydrogen. So essentially James Webb confirmed that this was not a hydrogen planet and did contain a lot of carbon-based molecules. And then by using modeling and simulations, they were able to recreate at least one example that seemed to fit the observations pretty well. And so here the theoretical models seems to predict that this is actually an extremely rich in carbon dioxide planet with very hazy, very thick atmosphere somewhat similar to Venus. As a matter of fact, it might be as dense as Venus itself, with extremely high pressures on the surface and basically haziness that prevents anyone from seeing the surface from the outside. But because there was also a detection of methane, in some sense this planet might also resemble Titan just a little bit. Although technically both Titan and Venus do actually kind of look alike. But in essence, what this means is that we now have a new type of a planet, and it's basically now called Super Venus. 
a carbon-dominated atmosphere containing very hazy, very thick clouds that instead of being rich in hydrogen or water vapor, seems to be basically enriched in carbon dioxide and methane through obviously processes we don't really understand yet. And obviously if this planet is as thick as Venus, it possibly also contains very extreme conditions on the surface, but maybe even contains enough pressure and temperature to basically turn carbon dioxide liquid. And that's because in certain pressures and certain temperatures, carbon dioxide becomes liquid and even becomes superfluid, allowing it to do a lot of bizarre things. And so basically here, we might even have some kind of a liquid cycle, and possibly even oceans, but not oceans of water, not even oceans of methane like on Titan, instead oceans of carbon dioxide. Which is why this is indeed a new type of a planet, a super Venus. Kind of like a mixture between Titan and Venus, but much more extreme. Although technically this planet could also contain other stuff as well, there might still be some hydrogen, maybe some water vapor, and possibly even helium. So future observations will probably tell us a little bit more. But for now what these new observations confirm is that this is definitely something we've never seen before, and it basically creates a new category that very likely exists in a lot of different places, we just haven't really seen them yet, because the atmospheric spectroscopy is still a relatively new field. But that means that in the next few years, we'll probably have even more discoveries of new planets and even new types of planets, or possibly even more Super Venuses discovered somewhere out there, maybe even right here in our neighborhood. And so until those future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.